So a couple of uh, articles came up uh, just like the last couple of days. Um, one in Economist, and uh, I'm not sure actually where the, where the second one was. Uh, that's The Economist. This was in, uh, I think, uh, Bloomberg or something. No, this is the Washington Post. So one in The Economist and one, one in The Washington Post. Um, both talking about demographics and uh, the democratic demographic crisis that both uh, China and Russia uh, are facing. We've talked about this a little bit, particularly we've talked about the fact that China, uh, for the first time since 1961, for the first time since the massive, uh, you know, tens of millions of people dying of starvation during the Great Leap Forward, actually should be called the Great Leap Backwards, but the Great Leap Forward under Mao Zedong, for the first time China its population shrunk this year, and, and what's particularly interesting about the fact that it shrunk is that the Chinese admitted that it shrunk. That is, th there's some speculation that says that the, the population has started, started to shrink uh, years ago, and they're only admitting it now, but anyway, they're admitting it. Um, China's National Bureau of Statistics announced a decline of 850,000 people to a new total of 1.4118 billion uh, it's a first decline in 60 years, right, since uh, 1961. The birth rate reached its lowest level on record, 6.77 per thousand people, down from 7.52 in 2021. So that's a big decrease just in one year. Um, so this is, this is, a, this is a, a big deal because not only um, does this mean China population now is shrinking? In, indeed, it is speculated that later this year, India will surpass China as the most populous country in the world. For the first time, probably in many centuries, I think for many centuries, China was the most populous nation on uh, the planet. But this means that China has a shrinking workforce. It has a rapidly aging population. Um, so you have fewer people uh, paying in to support an older population. Since China does not really have a pension system or a social security system, it, it, it and, and since many people are still, you know, relatively poor in China, it, 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 it does mean that a lot of uh, the income that young people are going to be producing is going to have to go to helping their parents and grandparents uh, uh, live. Um, and... Um, you know, this is this is going to really be a drag on. It means saving rates are going to go down, uh, consumption rates going to go up. Uh, if um, uh, if you know something about economics, you know that what ultimately drives an economy is is saving rates. In a sense of, it's fundamentally what drives an economy long term. Economic growth is uh, investment. Uh, so there'll be less investment in China. Uh, more uh, consumption, uh, you know, particularly focused on, on the, the, the aging population. Another interesting aspect of this is, is that it wasn't, uh, that many people didn't predict this. That is, uh, everybody expected the population of China to start decreasing, but a, a lot of the expectations were that it would decrease in, in the 2030s, in about 10 years. And this has happened 20, uh, it has happened 10 years earlier than many had expected. Um, again, this is, this is going to cripple the ability of China to have kind of the economic dynamism. It, it, thinks that it, 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 it thinks that it needs in order to compete with the United States, in order to build up a military, in order to, be, uh, you know, to, to become a dominant power in the world. Um, it, is, it is a real issue. And then, of course, there is a real potential for a real crisis as a people age and if China does not kind of have, if the Chinese people do not have the resources to support their parents and grandparents. Uh, there's a risk economically that China enters a period of stagnation, similar to what Japan entered in, in the 1990s. Remember, Japan is has been shrinking for a while now, uh, and uh, part of its economic struggles is no immigration, shrinking population, a, a significantly aging population. Um, Japan, I think, is now the oldest society in the world where 29% of the population is over 65. Uh, that is, uh, and, and, and China is heading in that direction, and that could result 
it won't be the only thing that results in stagnation, but if you combine it with rising authoritarianism in China, you combine it with um, a shrinking of the space uh, in which private enterprise is allowed to function and the, the, the limiting of the freedoms of, uh, of Chinese in the economic realm, you can see that the likelihood of stagnation in China is, uh, is significant. Again, I've said this for a long time now, I really don't think China is a significant threat long-term to the United States. It might be a short-term threat, but long-term it's going to have big problems domestically. Uh, now, of course, demography is not destiny. Uh, demography can change pretty quickly. Birth rates can change pretty quickly. In, um, you know, if you think about demography, when in the 1970s, when China's population was growing significantly, and it looked like it, it was going to have a massive population, um, <laughs> the state stopped that, right? The, the destiny of China was not to grow forever and, and, and to have massive, this massive population. Uh, the one child, the, the, the one child policy basically stopped it. So uh, uh, there are things that can be done, and, and those things don't have to be coercive. Israel for a while, the, the, the Jews in Israel for a while uh, had very low birth rates, and there was a real risk that the Arab population would exceed the population of the Jews in Israel within, I don't know, 20, by 2050. Uh, and uh, the, the birth rates are accelerated in Israel, and they've gone up, not just among religious Jews, but also among secular Jews. I think it, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, one's attitude. I've, I've said this before, I think, on the show, that I believe that uh, having children is an act of optimism. It's an act of belief in the future. It's an act of one's belief in one's ability to support a family, uh, to provide for a family, to, 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 to make a living. And I think that as, you know, uh, uh, if China was freer, uh, if, if uh, you know, the Chinese had significant values and, and, and believed in the future and didn't have kind of European-style cynicism, then um, birth rates would go up. And I think that's what's happened in Israel. I think Israel, as it became richer, um, as it became stronger, as it became more confident in its own survival long term, it's also, you know... Um, uh, it, 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 that confidence and that optimism has resulted in having more children. Just one other aspect of this is, and we'll see another country where it's even worse, um, because of the one-child policy and because Chinese families prefer to have boys than girls, there was, there was, there was quite a bit of... Um, you know, uh, female fetuses... Uh, uh, you know, aborted, uh, there are, there's about 104.69 men to every 100 women in China, which of course also creates uh, challenges instead of um, uh, challenges to having kids. Uh, you know, uh, there's just too many men, not enough women. And again, there are real restrictions on immigration, just like in Japan, are b b kind of bringing in, if you will, women from other parts of China. Um, uh, other parts of Asia or other parts of the world. Why just Asia? Uh, let me just say a few other things. China is trying to incentivize uh, people having children. They're, they're, they're giving uh, 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 money to uh, uh, families that have a third child. They're extending paternity leave. They're, they're trying to learn for some European countries like Hungary and Poland that, are, that have, have been subsidizing childbirth and have had some minimal success increasing um, increasing the number of babies in the economy. Uh, anyway, we are seeing, uh, I think, uh, the beginnings of real challenges, um, real challenges in China. The, the, the unemployment among young people is very high at 16.7 percent for 16 to 24 year olds. Uh, economic uh, innovation, uh, growth in the tech sector has been reduced significantly because of the crackdown by the government, um, and um, and the number of young people is shrinking. And remember, who innovates? Who grows an economy? Who really uh, is the productive energy of the future? It's young people. And uh, when you have fewer young people, you're going to have uh, less um, less innovation. 
Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.